It happened from out of nowhere. Mankind was set in their ways. And then, a race of underground creatures that have lived, uh, uh, what do you call, underneath uh, our planet all along emerged one day. And society as we knew it changed. The whites, they waited until their numbers were great. They tore up out of the ground. They pillaged our cities. They fractured our society. Unheard of creatures. And mankind was pushed to the brink. The apocalypse had come. Uh, uh, oh my god, it's the end of the world. Uh, it's time to make new friends. And everyone bunkered down, and brave men and women tried to rebuild society. And now we're doing a new kind of tasting video in an underground bunker to see, to review what snacks you would eat. <laughs> At the uh, end of the world. Good evening, King Paramecium here, and welcome to my taste testing at the end of the world. I'm here in my underground bunker, writing out the uh, end of fall of society, uh, Holocaust, the apocalypse. Uh, it, it's the end of the world, and we feel fine. <laughs> Uh, those who know me know that I'm a big fan of charcuterie meats and cheeses, and lately there's been a boom in popularity in tasting trays by uh, even big companies like Cracker Barrel, um, Hillshire Farms, and they're selling plastic trays with a peel-back lid with pairings of salami and cheese or ham and cheese and crackers or olives and raisins, whatever. But um, I will say, just a note, I'm not featuring Trader Joe's tonight, but they'd have the best prices on charcuterie on meat and cheese trays. Probably about 30% cheaper than a lot of the brands. But uh, if you're a Kroger customer like me, you've no doubt seen the Murray's brand when looking through their cheese and meat section. And this in particular caught my eye, a Murray's Sharp White Cheddar with Genoa salami and sea salt crackers tasting tray. And I looked up the Murray's brand because I'm not totally familiar with them. And apparently they're an artisanal cheese wholesaler out of Greenwich Village, New York City, founded in 1940 as an egg and dairy wholesaler. They continued to expand and in 2012 began opening Murray's Cheese Bar restaurants, of which there are now uh, like 350 locations as of 2017. And in the beginning of 2017, Kroger acquired the Murray's company, which is why if you, like I said, if you go through Kroger, you'll see a bunch of Murray's products. They don't just do cheese. They have meats, crackers, breads, olives, tapenades, and... Uh, I was excited to try it, and tonight I'll be pairing it with Angry Orchard Rosé Hard Cider. Now, sure, you've seen me taste cider on the channel before, and uh, I'm always a, I've always been a big hard cider fan, and Woodchuck was what started me out. Um, a little personal trivia, an Irish snake bite would be um, half Guinness, half hard cider, and a glass. And that's what started out my career as an alcohol, a connoisseur of drink. And for the past year or so, I've noticed Woodchuck has been gone in my hometown, and apparently there was a distribution fallout between the ABC company and the private uh, Vermont uh, Woodchuck company. So like a Thanos snap, it's just, it's gone. And I personally would not have bought Angry Orchard in the past. It's a little sweeter. But I believe they're recognizing that uh, cider is bigger than they thought, so they're making more varieties that are, like, they have a dry or a brute variety that aren't just, like, candy sweet. But um, this in particular, 
<clears throat> is unique because it is made from a rare red flesh apple from France. And when I say red flesh, I don't just mean the peel. I mean when you cut the apple open. Um, I haven't seen one myself, but it's like a blushed pink meat in the middle. And it gives it a little more of a rosy blush to the drink and a dry finish. I did see a recipe on the Angry Orchard site on making a sangria with uh, this lemon juice and watermelon juice, since we all have that laying around. But anyway, get this tasted. Now, cheddar, while cheddar cheese originated in a uh, village in Somerset called uh, Cheddar, the name has been thrown around throughout the world amongst many of cheeses, and there is actually no protected designation like chocolate is protected, meaning if your product does not contain enough cocoa solids, you have to call it chocolate flavored or chocolatey flavored, you know. But cheddar is not protected within the European Union, so all over the world, even processed cheeses can call themselves cheddar. So uh, typically, cheddar is observed as being yellow, but as we're tasting white cheddar tonight, I'll have to point out that the difference between what you uh, perceive as yellow or orange cheddar and white cheddar is annatto is added to cheddar cheese to give it the orange color. Annatto is uh, derived from the seeds of the, uh, how do you pronounce it, uh, Achiode. There's a shrub, Achiode. And it lends, you know, the orange color you recognize, but it's also purportedly gives it a uh, sweet and nutty finish to the flavor. But um, what's unique about this Murray's white cheddar I looked up is that Murray's, which again is out of New York, has their own cheese aging caves in upstate New York. Um, aging cheese in caves is popular because the temperature that naturally occurs in the cave and the moisture level aid in the process. Um, the sharpness that sharp cheddar is associated with is due to the level of bitter peptides in the cheese. And when it comes to salami, one of the most common, you know, sandwich salamis you see is hard salami. You might also see sopracetta. This tray features Murray's Genoa salami. The difference being Genoa salami is made from heritage pork where the animal is raised in open pastures. It gives it a much gamier flavor. Genoa salami, particularly this Murray's brand, is also slow aged with white pepper and garlic to give it a more robust flavor. And then it's crackers. You know, so anyway, first I'm going to test the cheese on this platter. The smell is of rubber band, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it's all about the taste. Also, you can see, you saw in my first close up, you can see the white flecks on this. I'll learn how to autofocus one day. Anyway, the crystallization you see on good quality cheeses is actually um, from calcium lactate. I'll let you know about that more in depth next time. But It's interesting. The When I said it smelled rubbery, the taste... Some sharp white cheddars I've had are just sort of like a salty sharpness, but that rubberiness lends itself to an extremely um, bitter taste. And I actually applaud them because usually just how cheddar is thrown around um, loosely, so is sharp, you know. And this is a different kind of sharp. This is, I really see where it comes from, bitter peptides. It does have a nice 
bite at the end. This is actually a really good sharp white cheddar, especially to have in a little pullback tray. But now we'll have the salami. There's a, the, the aroma is reminiscent of country style ham, which I really love. Um, usually things taste salty, country ham, like Edwards or Smithfield smell salty. The texture is firm but greasy due to the nice fat chunks. It does not have an offensively pungent flavor like some artisanal and craft salamis do. And it's it's really not a commitment. Like it's a good quality salami, but it doesn't leave like a film in your mouth. And now we will try them all together with the sea salt cracker. It's a nice little nice little bite. Altogether, it's a great package. Um, the crackers are not overtly salty. They have a nice, uh, crisp, flat texture. They do not detract at all from the salami and the cheese, and they add a sweetness to the whole package. So you have a combination of uh, sharp, bitter, salty, greasy, and a little sweet and crunchy texture, which make for a great stack combined. And... Um, the tray weighs in at two ounces, which that's just enough, you know, for a grab and go, or if you wanted to buy two or three of these, which I'll review other varieties later. <clears throat> it's a, uh, I think it's an appropriate amount just to taste, you know, or if you've already had dinner and you still are craving, you know, something savory and fatty, you know, it's a really great alternative. Now, we'll try the angry orchard rosé. It's a very perfumey, excuse me, as you can observe. It's very beautiful. It's almost peach colored. And you can really smell the crispness of fresh apple. It's still very sweet and perfumey like a lot of Angry Orchard, but the aftertaste is very floral. Not like hibiscus, but almost like rose. Oh, that's probably why they call it rosé. It's a great palate cleanse in uh, conjunction with the salami and cheese. And now, I'll see what it's like to pair a little bit of this. I'll leave the salami out of this bite and just rely on the sweetness of the sea salt cracker and the bitter bite of the white cheddar. It's a very playful and curious pairing of the two. I do recommend it, especially for the end of the world. <clears throat> now, you've got cheese, crackers, cider. What else would accompany this night better? The nuts. I have some fresh pecans here, which need no introduction. And there's nothing I like better than shelling fresh tree nuts. <clears throat> Shit. Now 
Have a good evening.